Welcome to another program of U.S. Farm <coughs> Report, brought to you by members of the National Farmers Organization in this listening area, in the interests of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation. We have as our special guest today, Congressman John C. Culver of Iowa, Congressman John M. Murphy of New York, Congressman William Green of Pennsylvania, and Congressman Thomas C. McGrath of New Jersey. How do you do? I'm Congressman John Culver of Iowa. And with me today are Congressman William Green of Philadelphia, Congressman Thomas McGrath of Atlantic City, and Congressman John Murphy of New York City. At the outset, I know I speak for my colleagues when I say how grateful we are to the National Farmers Organization for providing us with this opportunity to meet with you today, as well as meet with each other once again, to discuss a trip we recently took to my district in the second district of Iowa to view the problems, the promise, and the potential of American agriculture. I think this experience proved to be a most educational and certainly for me a most interesting and rewarding trip. As all of you are aware, who have an interest and a concern with the problems of agriculture and the problems of rural America today, in the Congress of the United States, the so-called farm block, the political muscle of the farm block, has declined most disturbingly in recent years. Only a few short years ago in the House of Representatives and the Senate of the United States Congress, there were over 300 representatives from areas that could properly be classified as rural or primarily agricultural. That number today is down to something over 100. And so it's apparent that it's increasingly important that those of us who have the privilege and the pleasure of representing this important part of the economy of this nation in the Congress of the United States, work doubly hard to bring to the attention of this national audience the problems we face as well as the great productivity and problems and potential of our area so that there is a support, a sympathy, and an understanding of the problems we face by these other regions in America whose own economy, whose own society are so vitally interdependent with our own. Because as we are aware also, without prosperity on the farm in Iowa, it's impossible to really have true prosperity in the factory in Congressman William Green's district in Philadelphia or Congressman McGrath's area in uh, Atlantic City or indeed in the great city of uh, New York, which uh, Congressman Murphy represents. It's in this spirit that we took this trip recently, which was organized by my farmers advisory group in the second district of Iowa. This is an organization that I've formed to advise me, to counsel me, on the problems of agriculture and the needs of our particular area so that we can shape and tailor farm legislation to be most responsive <coughs> to meeting the needs, the particular needs, of our area. Now this is an organization that was formed and is representative of every farm organization today. It's also a bipartisan in nature and has each of the members are active farmers and their suggestions and counsel to me have been extremely helpful. And in our negotiations and our deliberations and discussions together, we have been seeking out those areas where, as people interested in the problems of the farm, we can agree on matters of priority, need, of interest, and we commonly agree on these areas so that we can move ahead with these particular problems and not be concerned about the all too many differences that often come and interfere with most effectively representing the problems of agriculture and the problems of rural America generally. So the Farmers Advisory Group in my area, we decided that one of the most effective things we could do in increasing awareness and a mutual understanding in this nation would to bring, to bring out to our area men who represent areas in the United States, uh, uh, in this country, which are primarily uh, industrial in nature, primarily urban. The problems are much different in our own, but we felt if we brought them out to Iowa, and gave them an opportunity to sleep on Iowa farms, to see a typical farm operation, to be exposed to some of the costs of modern farming, the machinery, the equipment, to see firsthand some of the exciting conservation practices that are continually improving the efficiency so effectively of our American agricultural strength of this economy, that this would be extremely useful to them. So that when they went back to the Congress of the United States, and when they went back to their own districts, they could speak with a greater awareness and an intelligence and understanding to their own people 
about the vital interdependency of this nation's economy and how incredibly important it was that these programs in Congress of the United States, the farm programs and other matters of particular interest to us, must be supported if indeed we are going to have prosperity throughout the width and breadth of this nation, which is understandably the goal of all Americans. So it was a great pleasure for me to take out to my area on this particular type of mission these uh, great congressmen who represent areas with different problems than our own, but as members of the United States Congress have a responsibility as well to understand the problems and of all regions, of all sectors of our country, so that they can, in a very real and genuine sense, represent the national interest as well as the interests of their own district. And so it's a great pleasure to have all of you here today. And uh, I don't recognize you, uh, Tom, <laughs> without the bib overalls. <laughs> Well, but uh, I do hope that uh, maybe you'd be kind enough to uh, mention to some of our friends your experiences, uh, Congressman McGrath from Atlantic City, and I know they'd be of great interest to our viewers today. Well, thank you very much, John. Uh, I also, <coughs> excuse me, want to thank you for uh, your explanations on many occasions to me as to the problems that the farmers in the 2nd District of Iowa have. Uh, my trip out there in your company was very worthwhile. I brought with me a photograph that shows me on the back of a tractor. I was spent the evening before with farmer Glenn Brown and his wife Carmen in a farm near Olin, Iowa, as you know. And early in the morning, I uh, woke up and went out with farmer Brown while he feeded some of his uh, beef cattle. Was that before breakfast? That was before <laughs> breakfast, John. And uh, for the rest of my uh, life in Congress, at least, I'll always know what feed grains are. And I thought just that one example uh, is a concrete, specific example of what I learned on this uh, trip. Um, Tom, uh, were you at all impressed with the, uh, the costs of farming today? What uh, were the problems of uh, keeping young people uh, involved in farming, the importance of it, and yet how difficult this is under the circumstances of modern agriculture? Well, uh, Glenn Brown, uh, John, I think was almost 50 years of age. He's a very charming man. And I asked Glenn why there weren't more young people involved in this type of farming in Iowa. And one of the reasons uh, apparently is the tremendous capital investment that farmers have to make in the year 1965 to engage in farming. And uh, we did see some uh, displays of various types of farming equipment and the cost of these uh, various pieces, both new and used. And it was a tremendous amount of money. I remember that. I think it's interesting when you compare the cost to a working man and the problem it represents to his own <coughs> family budget to uh, afford the cost of a new automobile or pay his payments on, on that type of machinery to see this uh, staggering uh, cost of the uh, farm machinery necessary for a modern agricultural uh, farming operation. Yes, I recall also that on the farm where we saw a typical display of equipment, I think that the farmer had something like 120 rubber tires on various pieces of equipment. Yeah, it's really amazing. And this was, I think, was one of the most interesting uh, displays that we saw, don't you, Tom? I uh, do. We had uh, uh, one of the first farm that we visited, as you'll recall, was a typical farming operation. And the, uh, the uh, that was Dylan Story's farm. And uh, he took out his uh, books, and remember, right in the, in the farmyard, and read us his costs of operation, <coughs> and, and told us uh, the problems that uh, this represented in, in putting his uh, <coughs> children through college. And... Uh, and also, uh, the next farm, as you recall, we had a display of all the farm machinery out on the yard, and uh, we had two sets of signs. We had uh, one sign that represented the uh, present valuation of the equipment, and another sign which showed the uh, new, uh, new price on the equipment if it had to be replaced today. And I think those uh, dramatic uh, illustrations of the cost of uh, modern farming were, I think, uh, certainly uh, uh, something that I uh, have been aware of, but I, I, I know that uh, you were terribly impressed with it. At I, the I time. certainly was. Uh, when you, it was most interesting, and I think, first of all, you should be commended because uh, 
in my experience, I've never uh, seen a, a, a trip that was conceived like this, that was uh, uh, conducted to emphasize the interdependence uh, of both areas of the country. And I came away uh, with a picture, and a picture's worth a thousand words. I came away with a feel uh, for a farmer. I have a certain personal involvement that I never had before. I don't have a farm in my district. Uh, the people in my area have never really uh, asked me one question, uh, no matter where I went, on farm policy. And uh, I think you're to be commended for uh, doing what you could to, to heighten the interest of uh, people who otherwise wouldn't be so involved uh, with rural problems. And, uh, as I say, it gave me a, a, a much deeper personal attachment to the problem and, and a heightened interest. Uh, and uh, I enjoyed it very, very much. Well, Bill, uh, of course, your home's Philadelphia. Uh, I think our viewers would be interested, as I've been, in uh, discussing with you some of the problems of, of your area to learn uh, the geographic size of your district. You mentioned that you don't have any farms in your area, and you had a chance no, to I travel don't. around my area, which, of course, is uh, heavily farming and, uh, and uh, represents a great geographic area. But what is the the size of your area well, that, you, that you represent in the heart of Philadelphia, right I think the city to, there. to illustrate it uh, graphically, I could probably walk through my district while you flew through yours. Fantastic, yeah. isn't it? And Good uh, illustration. Yeah. <coughs> this is, uh, this is, I think, most remarkable. Have you ever been, uh, I don't think you'd ever been uh, uh, west at all, had you, uh, no, I Bill? Uh, no. <coughs> this is the first trip. That's uh, right, it is. It's the first time that I've really been uh, out, in the out into the Midwest, and it's the first time that I've uh, seen a country and a group of people where their whole social and economic life was conditioned uh, by the prosperity of our farms. Well, I, uh, I know, I certainly hope that uh, if you have occasion, as I know you will in uh, uh, the months ahead, uh, both here in the Congress and uh, when you're back in your own area giving uh, speeches and making appearances and talking with your constituents, uh, when they do talk about the price of food, uh, being so high, I, I know uh, hopefully uh, based on this trip and this experience where we've gone over some of the actual figures of uh, the cost of <laughs> agriculture and as well as the, the great contribution of agriculture. I mean, uh, the fact that uh, the average uh, percentage of personal income that is uh, expended on, on food in this nation is now about 18 and a half percent, 19 percent. That means, of course, that about 82 percent of uh, a man, working man's take-home pay in your city of Philadelphia is now available for costs of medical uh, yeah. care, which are so high today, the costs of education, which are staggering uh, when they have children that they have to send to college, uh, clothing and luxury items and automobiles and, and uh, recreation and travel and, and all the rest. And this is uh, because uh, of the incredible accomplishments, really, of, of American agriculture. And I think uh, uh, you can uh, very effectively now uh, indicate to them that uh, we do uh, eat uh, better and more cheaply than That's any right, people in the history of, the, of this world. And uh, this contribution is not only being made here at home, but uh, <coughs> overseas. And the balance of payments problem that uh, we all see, I know you, Tom, are happen to be on the uh, House Banking and Currency Committee, are very familiar with the great problems that we face in uh, balancing our payment situation. Uh, here and abroad, and uh, I think the fact that uh, overseas agricultural trade uh, represented in excess of six billion, six billion dollars last year is a most uh, staggering statistic, and it shows that uh, unless we can uh, maintain these uh, overseas markets, uh, maintain access to them in Western Europe, and, and uh, increase uh, the trade that we now enjoy in these other areas in future years. Uh, the consequences to the strength of our own economy will be uh, very, very great indeed. I happen to be a member of the House uh, Foreign Affairs Committee, as uh, you're aware, and in this capacity, I'm also uh, very, very much uh, uh, aware of the uh, very great uh, contributions that American agriculture is making through the feed, uh, Food for Peace, Peace program, program yeah. uh, in these underdeveloped areas, closing the gap uh, between the uh, staggering problems of uh, Explosing uh, world population uh, crisis, really, and, it's and to reduce our farm surpluses. And exactly, and uh, and, uh, and I think that the day is, uh, frankly, is fast uh, approaching when uh, we've been placing such an emphasis on uh, restricting agricultural uh, output that, with this exploding population around the world, even with 
American agricultural production going full throttle, we aren't going to be able to begin to meet uh, the needs of uh, uh, mankind uh, for food unless we, uh, at the same time, are building up <coughs> the strength of the agricultural economies in all these other areas. And here again, I think the expertise, the, the training, the ability, the knowledge of the American farmer is going to be invaluable in our overseas uh, aid efforts. So Tom, that, uh, Tom had on something earlier that concerned me very much and left a profound impression upon me. Uh, you know that I'm very young, uh, uh, and I was concerned by the exodus of the people from the farms, uh, particularly in light of what will be the case, a greater and greater demand on our farms to produce more and more with the increase in population, not only in this country, but throughout the world. Yeah, so now, in Iowa, for example, I don't think there's a state that better illustrates that problem, really. We have the highest percentage uh, bill of uh, elderly people in America. Some 14% uh, mm -hmm. uh, for example, of the Iowa population is 65 years of age or over. And to a great extent, uh, that particular uh, figure is uh, because of this very disturbing out-migration of young people who have not been able to find uh, job opportunities uh, uh, on the farm, have not had the uh, financial resources and wherewithal to remain in agriculture, which after all is uh, uh, the type of life's experience to which they're most familiar best equipped to make an effective contribution to our economy. And I think that it's uh, extremely important that uh, every step be taken to ensure that these young people are uh, given the opportunity to stay on the family farm and to work and to enjoy not only the economic and financial rewards from farming, but uh, what uh, I think you observed was a, a very, very satisfying social yeah. institution. <coughs> I know in your areas, in the cities, you've got problems of juvenile delinquency, yeah. of uh, air pollution, of uh, uh, problems of uh, urban renewal, for example, where you have to restore the uh, great problems uh, uh, and strength of the urban city. And none of these uh, problems, of course, uh, happen to be ours. Uh, we have different ones, as, as you're aware, and I'm trying very hard, uh, and with your help, I hope I'm uh, increasingly becoming aware of your particular problems, and I hope that, uh, in, a, in, a, in a way, this uh, trip that you made to Iowa, living on a farm, uh, sleeping, uh, sleeping there, working there, feeding cattle, going around and, and observing on a first-hand basis the various farm operations gave you a greater understanding of, of our particular situation. This jo is a <coughs> yes, Jack. Jo John, you brought one thing out at the outset of your uh, of your remarks, and that was the fact that the farm block has lost so much of its voting power, but the city block has lost its voting power too. It seems to me the, uh, the young people in the country uh, they don't stay in the core city which we represent, uh, and they're coming off the farms, uh, or let's say not staying on the farms, but suburban America uh, is, is building up and is becoming the more powerful uh, uh, voting bloc. I think, therefore, it's incumbent upon us to, uh, from the cities, and, and to get out on the farm and to do just exactly what you had us do. Let's come out and see the problems in Iowa and, and go through the, uh, the soil programs, the feed grain programs, and see them firsthand. I know uh, after I came back from that trip, I was convinced uh, of the soundness of the policies uh, on which we voted subsequently, and the president signed into public law uh, just shortly after we uh, returned from, uh, from Iowa. This is a farm bill. It's a farm bill. And, and I know uh, the farm appropriation bill, which is another uh, uh, heavy appropriation, which, which we could understand better uh, the need for the, uh, for the support in our agricultural programs, we could support that appropriation bill, even though uh, some of our critics, which we have to face when we go back to the city or, or to the suburbs, uh, are consumers. The consumers are very careful about prices, particularly things like bread prices. And, and they ask us why we support a program that's going to raise a loaf, the price of a loaf of bread uh, on their table. Did you receive mail, uh, <coughs> Jack, uh, in recent months uh, when the farm bill was being considered from various lobbying interests and so forth to suggest that uh, this would present a bread tax and increase the price of food uh, unfairly and so forth. Did you have that? Were you subjected to that type of mail campaign? John, I got more mail on the price of bread and a so-called bread tax uh, than on any other single issue this year. So they, it's, a consumer, it's a consumer uh, item and, and of consumer interest. And, and we know that, uh, that people who move to the suburbs People that are in these areas that want to buy and own a home, and they have a job, 
And as you said, they're, they're worried about housing, they're worried about schools, they're worried about that consumer dollar. Uh, they're the people that carefully watch us and how we vote and how we react. <coughs> and we can go back and tell them that this is a necessary program because we understand rural America, we understand the farmer and his problem, particularly in the light of 1965 realities. Like, well, like Tom pointed out on those tires. But, uh, exactly. I think, uh, <coughs> I, think uh, I, I certainly know you're aware how grateful I am uh, for your support of this farm bill, this farm legislation. Now we hopefully will enjoy an extension of, uh, particularly in Iowa, for four years of this feed grain program. Uh, which will be, uh, continue to be uh, a matter of uh, invaluable assistance to the strength of our area's economy. And I know it took a lot of courage, frankly, for uh, you men. We've talked a lot about uh, this farm bill. I know I've had occasion to visit with all of you uh, at great length about it, how important it was to our area. But I also tried to point out, as, as you're aware, uh, uh, how important it is, as you suggest, to your own area. For example, the, the, the rubber uh, the tires, uh, the steel in uh, Pennsylvania. As, uh, the American farmer is perhaps uh, the greatest purchaser of steel, independently of the armed services, uh, of any sector of our economy. And uh, you saw all this equipment, these tractors. Well, if the farmer doesn't have enough money in his overalls to buy uh, a tractor, then, uh, as you know, Bill, well, in my district that makes the tractor is works in the steel mill in, in, in Pennsylvania is going to uh, be another statistic in the unemployment rolls. And he's going to also present problems uh, for you in terms of increased welfare costs uh, and, and all the other attendant problems that come invariably with an unemployed uh, situation. Uh, Congressman Murphy, uh, John, uh, you have this uh, most interesting district, I think, Brooklyn and uh, Staten Island. Uh, and. Uh, I, uh, I know that uh, when I talk out in Iowa about uh, uh, Brooklyn, that's a faraway place. And I think uh, after you left, I had occasion to visit with, uh, of course, uh, my friends and the farmers that you uh, stayed with and saw. And I just want you to know, uh, I think they learned uh, as much as you did about uh, your area and the problems and the fact that uh, a New Yorker uh, can care about Iowa. I think it's a wonderful thing. And I think... Uh, uh, same is true with Atlantic City. These are faraway places, Philadelphia. And we often get the feeling, I think, in our area and in uh, rural areas or in Iowa that other parts of the country aren't interested, don't know our problem, don't care about it. And I think really what we're talking about is evidenced by this trip. It's a question of us getting together and working very hard uh, and conscientiously trying to acquaint ourselves with other problems. And I think we realize, as, as we do all through life, that uh, people aren't uh, all that different no matter where they are or what they're doing, and they're just That's proud right. to be Americans. And we have a great stake in this thing together. And I think a rising tide is, is going to lift all the boats. And if this economy is going to be strong across the whole nation, it has to be strong in the farm. And again, it has to be strong in the factory. And they are, of course, so closely interdependent. I think we've spoken at the outset about the fact that the uh, farm muscle politically in the Congress is, is down uh, to such a uh, uh, low, low extent over what it uh, used to be uh, earlier in uh, the history of this country. And uh, frankly, I'll confess now, uh, nearing the end of the program, that uh, one of the reasons uh, we asked and particularly invited you, not only because we felt you're the kind of men that uh, have the sufficient interest and are kind enough to take the time to come out there, but because you represent states with such great population and therefore such great importance and effectiveness, really, in uh, the Congress of the United States. Uh, for example, John, how many congressmen are there from New York, you know, in your delegation in the in the House now. Well, we have the largest delegation in the House, John. But interesting enough about Brooklyn is we have seven congressmen from Brooklyn alone. Think of it. And Think uh, of it. How many in your whole delegation? In the now? state, we have 41. 41 congressmen. How about uh, you, Tom, we, in New Jersey? We have 15, John. 15. Uh, what's that give us? Uh, 55? <laughs> How about you, Bill? 27. 27? Yeah. I'll let, somebody, I'll let somebody else add that's that. It's a total up. of 83. <laughs> <laughs> but I can, uh, I do hope that you're talking to your friends and uh, talking to your fellow congressmen. Have you had a chance to talk to them about your trip to Iowa? Did they, were they surprised that you went? Have they kidded you about going? Or <laughs> well, they kidded us about uh, about getting up in the middle of the night, John. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and of course, we didn't get much sleep out there. But but I, I want to find out the answer to uh, one thing, and I'm going to keep uh, checking with you from time to time. 
That's to see how much progress uh, they've made to converting from 40-inch rows on corn to 30-inch rows. We'll so keep you well advised. Seems yeah. to me that could increase by about 20 or 25 percent the entire productivity of the of the acre, the planted acre out there. Well, uh, it seems like uh, Jack's learned something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I do want to thank all of you, uh, not only again for uh, your kindness in making this trip, but uh, also joining with us here today. And I certainly urge you to keep talking to those other other friends of yours and your great big delegations and help us out there on the farm where I we think really we need it. Thank you because you're the one that made the trip possible and uh, conceived the idea, which I think was a good one, very good one. Thank you very much. Bro. I join in these strong sentiments. Jack, you know how I feel about it. I uh, was particularly happy to, to not only see the farms, but we also saw some real industry in, uh, in Cedar Rapids, and, and, some, and that uh, Quaker Oats plant was also in a, an illumination to me to see well, that you not only have a rural area, but you also have an industrial area. And of course, much of our industry, understandably, is agriculturally related. Yeah. So right. it again is dependent upon the strength primarily of agriculture in our area. Well, I do wish to uh, thank again all of you for being here and above all thank the you. National Farmers Organization for their kindness in making this program and this presentation possible. The historic records of the United States government prove conclusively that farm prices must be in balance with wages and interest costs in order to have a fully operating economy and relative full employment for our nation's people. Government records also prove that each dollar of gross farm income generates seven dollars of national income. How much longer can we afford to underpay our nation's farmers when it is costing our nation seven dollars for each dollar of underpayment to the farmer? The members of the National Farmers Organization are calling the rest of calling on the rest of American farmers to join with them in an all-out effort to solve this farm problem. <laughs>